Everything that you have in your life is because of your subconscious mind. The subconscious is the single most powerful part of the human mind. It is actually the divine part of you inside, but it is under your control. It does not argue, it does not judge, it just does. Words from Subconscious Magic, the UCS Virtual Book Selection for Sunday, July 16th. Come and explore more Subconscious Magic with the Unity of Chicago South Virtual Book Club, an interactive live stream feature held each third Sunday of the month. The download link for this free book is available at unityofcs.org slash downloads. Experience the Unity of Chicago South Third Sunday Virtual Book Club, streaming live Sunday, July 16th, beginning at 11 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube at Unityox. Unity of Chicago South, the number one online New Thought spiritual community, streaming from Chicago. Welcome to the month of July, where the spiritual mind power is understanding. Understanding is that within which comprehends. No one can go beyond his level of understanding. In order to increase my lot in life, I work to expand my capacity to understand. In increasing my capacity to comprehend, as understanding takes root, the pain from my error thinking subsides. The more I understand, the better I feel. My understanding knows and comprehends in wisdom. With wisdom being the voice of God as the source of my understanding, as I pay attention to what I understand, my life prospers. In all thy ways, get understanding. There are two ways of developing understanding. One is to run willy-nilly through life and learn by the experiences had. The second is to follow the guidance of the indwelling spirit. With my free will and choice, I choose this day to follow spirit into my understanding. In following spirit, I can never go wrong. Spiritual understanding is the ability of the mind to apprehend and realize the law of thought. Spiritual understanding brings the relationship of ideas to one another to the forefront of my consciousness. Upon receiving the realization, I understand there is nothing else to do. The realization itself and the shift in consciousness that is eminent does everything that needs to be done. I now take a moment to commune with God because I understand its importance.
as I study, as I pray, as I meditate and sit in the silence to increase and grow in my understanding. I am assured that right here and right now, all is well and well indeed. And so it shall forever be. This is where we pause and ask for your support as it is important to our growth. Please use the information found to my right or go to unityocs.org support to provide your financial support. As a major part of the growth of this online spiritual community, we ask that you take this moment to share, follow, repost and of course financially support our work. Your action helps in our mission to provide universal teachings beyond a traditional walled space. You are instrumental in helping this community as well as those that can benefit from the teachings. We thank you in advance for your support of Unity of Chicago South, the number one online New Thought spiritual community, streaming live from Chicago. Dollar sign. Unity Chicago South. For those using Cash App. Find us at Unity of Chicago South online at giveliffy.com and 1448 East 52nd Street, number 132, Chicago, Illinois 60615, to support by check.
This is where we take pause and ask for your support as it is important to our growth. Please use the information found at unityocs.org support or the QR code to my right to provide your financial support. As a major part of the growth of this online spiritual community, we ask that you take this moment to share, follow, repost and of course financially support our work. Your action helps in our mission to provide universal teachings beyond a traditional walled space. You are instrumental in helping this community as well as those that can benefit from the teachings. We thank you in advance for your support of Unity of Chicago South, the number one online New Thought spiritual community, streaming live from Chicago. Well, welcome, 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 welcome to our virtual book club. This is the number one online New Thought spiritual community that is streaming from the wonderful city of Chicago, Unity of Chicago South, where each third Sunday of the month, and that will be going forward, our celebration will feature the Unity Chicago South Virtual Book Club, an interactive open forum opportunity to exchange thoughts and perceptions about featured material intended to help us be better to do better. Thank you, Reverend Bobby, for reminding us of the spiritual principle from 4 July understanding. Let me introduce myself. I'm Reverend R. Ken, one of the ministers participating in this Sunday's book club. Why the virtual book club? Well, people ask, well, when you're online, how do you interact with other people? And that's a valid question. So we've come up with the idea that the book club will be an opportunity for people to share what they feel, what they see, what they might even be going through, through the use of the chat on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you're new to that idea, just kind of sit back and we have some questions that have already been submitted that we will uh, address and kind of get used to it and know that every third Sunday of the month, we will be featuring a selection for discussion at Unity of Chicago South. Now the featured book or selection or reading, writing for today is Subconscious Magic. And the download link for it is still available at unityocs.org forward slash downloads. The second reminder of this day is that there is an infinite source available to everyone. It's there for each who seek it, no matter their race, gender, or religion. Believe what you may, but know that the source of the universe is also the source of each of us. Therefore, the principle supporting the stars is the principle supporting and available to each of us. 
as I declare this statement in the first person, I declare it for all. I am open and receptive to this divine living principle. Father, Mother, God, I am grateful. This is my declaration. This is my truth. And as I accept it, so it becomes. And all is well and well indeed. Uh, I'm going to open today's uh, book club by quoting from the writing, The Subconscious Magic uh, PDF. And it goes like this. Have you ever wondered why some people just seem to magically attract and attain their dreams effortlessly while others try so hard only to eventually fail? Just what is this mysterious magic that they know? It's not that they are smarter than the rest. Sure, there are people who are smart and successful, but there are also people who are smart and unsuccessful. The truth is that you don't have to be talented or extraordinarily intelligent to succeed. So what's the missing secret behind getting the life you want, the life you know you deserve? Some people may say that luck has something to do with it. I'm sure you've heard people say, he was in the right place at the right time, or she was just lucky. Actually, there is no such thing as luck. Luck is just the receiving of goodness in your life that you don't have an explanation for. The truth is that everything that you have in your life is because of your subconscious mind. The subconscious is the single most powerful part of the human mind. An example of this, as, as we continue from the book, is how you or have you ever gone to bed at night wanting to wake up at a certain time? That example was given in how it works. And then, then we're given the example of waking up at the correct time, even if you change time zones. And it is explained that that occurrence of waking up on time is the subconscious mind in action. You can imagine your subconscious mind like a never ending file cabinet, the writer tells us. And like any file cabinet, in order for you to get to the file that you want, you first have to consciously direct yourself to the location that file of that file, and then you can pull it out. The subconscious is very complex and all knowing. It is actually, it is actually, it is actually the divine part of you inside, but it is under your control. It does not argue. It does not judge. It just does. Now, with that said, let's take a moment to remind you that you may submit questions or comments in the chat box of both Facebook and YouTube and I'll do my best to uh, address them during the session. And of course, if not, I will answer them afterwards if possible. So check back with uh, the, the platform that you're using. Now, I, I do have a few topics from the book that we can start with, uh, questions that have come up. And uh, the idea of limitation and shortage the idea of limitation and shortage. Well, this report that we read, this PDF, for those of you that read it, provides us with a, a different take. It provides us with a perspective more in line with the universal law of abundance. We're told to release the idea of the genie of three wishes 
and embrace a, a divine truth of the divine part inside of us has an unlimited capacity and potential. That subconscious magic that he speaks of. We should know that we control the seeds that produce the crop that is our life. We control the seeds, okay, that are planted in the subconscious mind that produce the crop of our life. Now, by planting suggestions such as fear or worry or doubt or sorrow or thoughts of poverty, we are actually programming our divine genie to bring more of that to us in our life. So here's the first question. It reads, the writer states that if there is something in our life right now that we don't like, we are responsible for it. And the question goes on to say, I have heard that from various new thought and metaphysical practitioners, but I fail to see how my misfortune in my life came from my thoughts, as I never thought of my own sickness. Wow. Powerful question. Well, as is stated in, in the reading, it doesn't mean that one or that you sat there and wished for it on purpose. And then he goes on to make this very, very powerful point. The fact that many of us don't even have a clue that we are creating certain conditions in our lives. The writer explains that the entire universe operates on absolute precision. It doesn't always mean that we're going to understand the details or all of the details of how it works, but it does mean there is an exactitude behind everything that exists and happens. So the question becomes, how much control of our lives are we giving up to some external person or thing. You see, we are bombarded with ads and information, some of value and some not, coming from media, from the internet, and, and from people, not always being aware, us not always being aware of the impact these messages have on our subconscious mind. Once that subconscious is convinced that the information seeds are to be planted, it plants them. And they begin the process of manifesting in our lives. Remember, it doesn't argue, it doesn't question, it does what we have allowed into our fertile divine soil to come forth, manifest in our lives. Wow. Wow. So on the quick side of that answer, I would add that we don't necessarily, as he said, we don't have to understand. We just need to know that it works and that it is an exact process and then put ourselves in the position to initiate the process, moving it toward the goal that we want by suggesting, by thoughts, by focus, by our practice that we talk about here regularly. Remember, if you're watching, you can put questions, comments in the chat box. And again, I will uh, address them as, as I can during, the, uh, during our celebration here this, this day. And of course, if I'm not able to get to them, I will answer them right afterwards by putting the answers in the chat box. Next question, how does the example 
of Jesus being half human and half spirit fit into New Thought teachings? Hmm. Good question. Religious founder Ernest Holmes says this when defining Jesus Christ as Savior. He says that it does not refer to Jesus Christ as a person, but it's referring to the Christ principle, which is found in all people and giving Jesus credit for revealing that principle to humanity. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, a new religious movement, from his dictionary of metaphysical terms, he says that Jesus is metaphys metaphysically is the I am in humans. The self-directive power raised to divine understanding and power. The I am identity. So when we are saying I am that I am, we are declaring connection and bringing forth and calling forth that Christ power that's within us. Now remember, these two powerful leaders of pretty much the largest New Thought movements worldwide both describe spirit aspect of Jesus as principle. The spirit aspect of Jesus as principle. A principle embedded within each of us with the potential to in full expression in our current lives. So it can come forth in this fullness in our current lives, this Christ principle, this subconscious, active subconscious mind, energy can come into full expression right now in our current lives. We don't have to wait till another time. Hmm. Now, we may accept this living principle as an aspect of the subconscious, or we may say that the subconscious is an aspect of the principle. Our writer explains that innately, we are a mixture of flesh and spirit. And whatever name you may use, that mixture is the true us. Wow. Wow. So it's, so it's telling us that no matter what your condition is, no matter what your situation is, this mixture of spirit and flesh is who you really are. You're not all flesh and you obviously are not all spirit. It's, it's a combination. And how do we take advantage of the combination? Hmm. Wow. Our next question. As we're moving along here, we've got about 10 minutes, 15 minutes left. Again, remember, you can submit questions on YouTube and Facebook in the chat bar. And I am told that the program we use will consolidate them and bring them forth to me. So I'm believing that works, right? How do the phase of mind impact what manifests in our lives? Hmm. How? Okay. Well, we're told that our objective mind is where thinking and command giving takes place. And then those thoughts and commands are directed to and accepted by our subjective phase of mind. Where this is a place where Holmes refers to as the subjective moles are formed. Hmm. And what are these moles? Moles, M-O-L-D-S. These are the habitual thought patterns which are in the subconscious mind. So if we go back to an earlier question, I don't sit around thinking of poverty for myself. I don't sit around thinking of sickness for myself. I don't think, sit around of thinking that. But if we look at the impact of the thoughts and information that's coming in, 
it can create that mold that is filled with the energy that produces it in our lives. Now, Holmes goes on to explain that the subjective creative mind has no choice other than to receive images of thoughts and reflect them back to us as conditions. I, I just want to stop here, for, you know, take a pause as I continue to answer that question about the phases of mind and how they impact our lives and remind you and remind myself even the subconscious mind, no matter what we want to, what kind of uh, uh, character we want to give it, it does not have the ability by its very nature to say no. I won't, or yeah, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. It must take what it receives and plant it and produce it. So if I am allowing ideas from the outside that I don't want in my life and I continue to imbibe them by reading certain information, by listening to certain uh, uh, information, by thinking certain information, my subconscious mind is not saying I can evaluate you really don't want this. It doesn't have that type of power. So you can see the importance of being careful about what you continually feed it because it's, not, it's no stopgap on it other than the fact that it really has to say, okay, I believe you. So that means you have to give it a lot. You know, you can't just say one day, okay, I'm better. And, and it says, oh, yeah, okay, I'm better. You have to convince it that you are better. And it says, okay, you're better. Let me go do those things too so you can feel better. So it's not just a one-shot deal. And that's the good or the bad, the positive or the negative. So the things you don't want in your life, they didn't just come up with one thought. And the changes that you may want in your life, they don't come up with just one thought. Here's an experiment that, that you could try for yourself, okay? Take one thought, one thought, or one idea about you, about what you want to change in your life. It could be money, it could be health, it could even be a relationship situation. Create a positive question about the situation, such as, why is money flowing to me now? Or how is it that I am improving physically each day? Or when I wake up each day, why am I so joyous? These are simply examples of what our writer refers to as suggestions, but they're given to you and given to your mind on a much more powerful platform as science has done the research to let us know that the mind is designed to seek answers to questions posed to it. Think about that. This activity of why am I, how am I, inputs a new dynamic in our subconscious as it weaves the answer to the questions into our manifest life. Now, I just, just a suggestion, try saying your sentence, whatever it is, the one sentence every day for 21 days. And you will begin the process of reprogramming your subconscious mind and taking more control over the direction of your life. Remember, if you don't interject doubting that the question will be answered, neither will your subconscious. It will just do, as we've been reminded over and over again. And I'm, so let me stop here and just give you a, a quick reminder. If you want a dynamic money treatment, you can go to our download page 
and uh, download Unexpected Money Treatment. And it's for free. It doesn't cost anything. And you'll find our download page at unityocs.org forward slash downloads with an S. Okay? Have some, we have some stuff over there for you. If you really want to be better to do better. Our next question. Where is my subconscious located? I have heard that it is within, but where? Wow. Let's go back to our, 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 our reading. We're told that the subconscious is present in every aspect of us. It is in our organs. It's in our blood, it's in our veins, it's in our hair, it's in our nails, it's in our sweat. <laughs> Which means that you have the ability, that we have the ability to send thoughts and feelings to wherever it is present, which is everywhere. So that question becomes, what thought do you want to send and where do you want to send it? Oh, I stubbed my toe. I want to send a thought to my toe that I feel better, that it will not inhibit me from walking. It will help me, whatever. You know, I'm making it up as I go along here. But whatever, wherever. I sprain my ankle. I'm sending thoughts to my ankle of, how well it's healing, how well it's coming together, how it's always been healthy, whatever it may be. Emma Curtis Hopkins, who uh, is known and was known as the teacher of teachers in the early New Thought movement, said that one can be very effective in bringing forth the positive dynamics of any situation by seeing it as good and sending it good. So he said, hold it. I'm having a challenge right now, whatever it may be. I don't even want to give it a name. And you're telling me that I should see it as good. And that's how you would read it just looking at it. She says you should see it as good and you should send it good. So I can't see this as good. This is nothing good about this in my life. This is where our metaphysical teaching comes in. It's not that the situation is good. Is that within the situation, there is only one power and one presence. And that's what you're connecting with the good of that power and that presence in the situation. So you can't look at the appearances and try to treat them or try to work with them. You must go deeper beyond the appearances and connect with the good that is, some would say, God. And she says, you sin good with whatever treatment you're doing, whatever work you're doing, whatever practice you have. She says, remember to see good, to see good and send that good to wherever. So you see good in the situation by going beyond the appearance. And then whenever you are treating or deciding or praying, whatever your practice is, you also have a consciousness of good, an attitude of good, thoughts of good. In general, they don't have to be about the situation, in general, because that's an energy that you're sending. I think we can have time for, let me see, one more question. Again, if you have a question or comment, you can put it in the chat box and it'll be addressed at this point after uh, today's celebration. The writer speaks of loving money. Oh yeah, this is good. <clears throat> I thought that was a bad thing to do. I thought it was a sin. Mm. How many of us have come up with that external concept? Remember we're talking about what, what external thoughts and energies we allow into our internal subconscious. Many of us have come up with that. And the writer explains that the idea here is not loving money in the way it may have been presented to us in the past. 
but he states that the first step is to change your financial thermostat. And that you do that by building a spiritual connection with money. Wow. So if we put the two together, take Emma Curtis Hopkins, it's all good. The good is in there and send it good. That attitude toward money begins to change the energy of the thermostat of how we feel about money by going through the reprogramming process again of letting our subconscious know that, hey, I have a new idea. Money is cool. It's good. But the, your subconscious, remember, it's not going to take two days of money's good and cool. It's going to take a process for it says before it says, okay, I accept it. This is a little bit off of uh, the answer. I'm going to finish the answer in a minute, but I want to just give a little commentary here on uh, grace. You say, well, where the heck you do is that coming from? Well, I see grace as the gap between what we ask for and what we, what our subconscious mind accepts that we really want. You see, we can say and think, let me talk about myself. I can say and think some dumb, dumb things, okay? And if my subconscious said, okay, every time I thought of one of these dumb things, my life would be more tumultuous than it is right now because my subconscious would be just flip-flopping, flopping, flipping until I learned how to give it only what I wanted in the moment that I wanted it, you see. So the grace is the fact that it takes the subconscious a period of time before it accepts that I really do want whatever it is I'm asking for. And once it accepts it, Remember, it just does. It just does. So, so that's why we go back to it. Take it's a process. It takes a it takes repetition for the subconscious to say, "Okay, you've convinced me. Now let me go do it. Let me go get it. Let me go create the scenario. Let me get your mind in the right way. Let me point you in the right direction because I've accepted it." Okay. So going back to the money part. Uh, money not being evil. Uh, author, the writer, tells us again, the truth is that everything has a spiritual aspect to it. Whatever you connect to in a wholesome, true, loving way, you attract more of. In a loving, truthful way. Hmm? In a wholesome, good, in other words, good, going back to Emma Curtis Hopkins, good. He says you have to begin to love money in the same way you love your body, your parents, your spouse and your children. You have to begin to see there is love in those things that you want and understand that what you want is what? Good for you. Because why? You say it's good for you. It's not about worshiping money or being greedy. It's about having money in your awareness, in your intention right now. The genie with the unlimited potential to deliver can do it when we remove the limited thinking and instead plant seeds in line with universal mind, thought seeds of abundance. As we consciously connect with our own everywhere present subconscious mind through reprogramming using the thoughts we allow through to it. 
in some of our teachings, we hear, you are the gatekeeper. And people say, well, that's, I'm the gatekeeper to my mind, my thoughts. No, more importantly, you are the gatekeeper of what thoughts you allow through to be implanted in your subconscious to allow the subconscious magic to bring forth that what you want. Now, you may not have had an opportunity to get a copy of Subconscious Magic. It's a very short read, double spaced, a lot of white. It's, it's really a short read, uh, you know, simple PDF. Well, I encourage you to go to the site to download it, download the link to it today. And the fact is that it doesn't really matter if you are new to new thought or you are a new thought master. It acts as a reminder to your own dynamic potential. And sometimes we just need a little, a little help, a little left, a little poof, to get us back on track, to remember that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Well, I want to thank you for bringing your consciousness to this space at this time. And until next time, this is Reverend R. Ken for the unity of Chicago South spiritual community saying you are today what you thought you were yesterday. And you will be tomorrow what you think today. Guard your thinking about who you are. Namaste.